Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, everybody? What's good? It's your boy, BQ. This is is the impact land thanks for swinging by as always if you haven't got opportunity yet here on the channel i did a video that was my six was a six yeah six resolutions for impact six new year's resolution for impact wrestling for 2023 so make sure you check that out here on the channel if it's your first time here consider hitting that subscribe button all right we're going to jump right into this episode uh there's not a whole lot else i'm going to talk about uh i think i touched a lot in the other podcast that i did so we're just going to go ahead and uh run through this show give you my thoughts of what i thought was a pretty good episode and i'll be uh previewing hard to kill giving my predictions here in a couple days i'm gonna try to do it sooner than later um it's only if i think they're going to announce another match on thursday I don't know if they're going to do that or not. So I may wait to Friday to do it just in case. But, you know, spoiler alert, I think this is the best hard to kill car they've ever put together. And, you know, I owe my social media followers, my listeners, everyone an apology because I've really been, uh, you know, I've been living the gimmick, the negative BQ gimmick over the last several months over this. I don't want to call it the hard to kill build so much, but just the show in general sends bound for glory. I keep talking. Where's the stories? It's just a bunch of wrestling. And yeah, there still is a bunch of wrestling. Don't get me wrong, but some of the stories for hard to kill, uh, the storylines kind of went over my head, you know, like they just weren't, I think we're in this, this world where storylines and outcomes and everything are so obvious sometimes that it, when they throw us, you know, they can throw us for a loop very easily if they want to. And I think I was really thrown for a loop on, on a lot of this stuff because I look back at him like there were some actually pretty good stories being told. I mean, I just didn't see him coming, you know, and there's a lot of you who are always quick to tell me, you know, let it play out. That's that's the wrestling thing, right? When we don't like something, we don't agree with it. We don't understand it. There's always someone that says, hey, let it play out. And I probably should have done that in a lot of cases with this card, but I think this is the best one they've ever put, ever put together. This has typically been my favorite pay-per-view of the year. I know it's only three, four years old, but this this typically has been my favorite pay-per-view. Hard to Kill is the one that, um, you know, I think they go into it very motivated for the new year. I mean, shit, the, the first one they did with Kenny Omega and Rich Swan, and that was an empty arena show. I thought that show was off the hook, and I wasn't a real big fan of the empty arena stuff. So um, let's get into this episode here, though. Uh, again, this was a pretty good episode. I'm always going to tell you if I think it's good or if. this all right sorry about that my uh internet looks like it went out for a little bit um what did disappoint me a little bit i talked about this on the uh um, on the new year's resolution show that i did is that i'm always talking about when is it a good time for a soft like relaunch rebrand um top of the year after major pay-per-views like what can we do to uh, update the show a little bit, make it feel a little bit different. I, I talk a lot about the presentation. And, you know, we kick off 2023. And for those of you who watch AEW, you saw that they changed the aesthetic. They changed the graphics. They, The show is exactly the same, but because they made little changes, it felt a little bit different. And you got to do that sometimes. So it's just not, it doesn't, every episode doesn't feel the same. It's it's a good way to just kick off the year. Hey, it's the new era of XXX wrestling. I don't know why I hit you with the triple X, but it's a good, it, it's just a good way. It's a new era. And it might not really be a new era, but at least sell people on the fact that they can expect something different. And, you know, we kick off the impact shows. It's the slow motion intro. It's that it always has the C4 spike and C4 spike with Tom yelling and 
and, and we own the night and then the video sound and the red and, and, and it's I mean, really, if you think back to the pandemic, the show is exactly the same with the exception of that. There's excuse me. I hit my microphone there uh, with the exception that there's fans in the crowd. That, that's pretty much it. There's some little difficulty. I mean, a difference is thank God they got rid of those pink lights and and things like that so they, they do make little changes but overall it's like the same show and someone's like well they recorded this last year that's what they told me on twitter okay did, were they unaware that the new year was coming were they when they were they unaware that january 1st was right around the corner when they did the tapings i mean you can do new graphics a new style of graphic a new intro this isn't shit that has anything to do you, you could have recorded this episode in, in in february of last year you know it those little things have nothing to do with it, you know? So that was, that was what I was a little disappointed on, but I also expected it. I did not expect to go into the new year with the show looking any different. Um, we kick it off with, uh, I, you know what? I actually watch BTI. I always say BTI. Yeah. Before the impact, I get it confused with brace for impact. That drives me crazy. Anyway, I actually did watch BTI. For the first time in forever. Uh, and Giselle Shaw and Kylan King kicked it off. So that, that was a pretty good little match. I would check it out if you guys could. Uh, I did a lot of fast forwarding through BTI. You know, a lot of old match. They have the formula of the old matches and the matches from last week. And another match to the show. You know, one could be more of an enhancement talent match. And then, you know, you're like little mini main event. I think people would care about it a lot more. I don't think enough people tune in just for that one match. Um, but with that being said, I forgot what the, I, I wrote it down, but I don't know where I wrote it down, what the uh, YouTube views were for uh, before the impact. And it was decent. It was decent enough. So I think, I think enough people are watching it, but I think there's more they could probably do with it. But my impression is that it's a little more fresh because it's, it's, I never thought I'd say this. It's fresh because it has Josh Matthews but he's not the voice of impact anymore. So the fact that he's there and, and Gia, and I think that BTI has done a lot for Gia because when she first came on, I remember being kind of upset because they had uh, Alicia. I mean, what was it? Yeah. Alicia to uh, they had uh, Gabrielle, whatever. I don't remember her, what her full name. And they were like phenomenal backstage interviews. Obviously also, you know, Melissa Santos, like really good backstage interviews interviewers and they brought her in and I wasn't feeling it. I was like, she's like a robot, you know? And, um, when, before the impact first came, you know, came on and she was on the show. And I, I think I watched the first one. I said, you know what? I think this is going to be good for her because it's a very loose environment. You know, you don't have to recite a script or you're, you're not, you're not rehearsing what you're saying ahead of time. It's a very loose environment. Uh, and I think since she's been doing that, it's really shown shown on impact. And when she does her her segments, her interviews, or whatever, like she she does a she's come a long way. She's done a good job, you know. I mean, Mackenzie Mitchell, once upon a time, who they should have never let get away. By the way, she was a fucking go back to the impact on pop shit. She was a robot, an absolute robot, horrible uh, when she first started. And I watched NXT the other day. I don't know why, because I was bored to tears. Mackenzie's. Uh, incredible now, you know, so uh, I, I'm seeing that some of that growth in Gia. So that that's awesome. But anyway, that match was pretty cool. And I, I mentioned last week with Kylan King, uh, I'm a big fan of hers and she's someone I, I really would look hard at if I were impact. I mean, she's six one. She's, she's, uh, she's very different than anything else they have. And I'm very surprised that AEW didn't really keep her around. And she did some NWA stuff. She took on Camille for the bell. Like she had some good matches there, but she's someone, um, this is her second time on BTI. So maybe they're looking hard at her, but I really would. I think, um, I think that's an excellent addition to the knockouts division. If you can do that. All right. So the show kicks off. We got a uh, Masha Slamovich versus Taylor Wilde. This was my first, uh, cause I, cause I didn't watch, I, I wanted to watch, um, Kylan versus Taylor Wilde on BTI last week, but I didn't. This was my first view of Taylor Wilde's new gimmick. And I was 
uh, when she had her match with Mickey, like she was doing heelish stuff. She was getting booed. Like I thought she was turning heel. I'm still not convinced she's not. I, I don't really know what she is. I'm I'm leaning towards she's still being a baby face. She's still doing the W. Uh, I wish she did it because the gimmick is so different. Like I don't think she, she should tie it into any part of her old, old gimmick. You know what I mean? But it's fresh for her. Yeah, she's really good. I, I really like Taylor Wilde, but it's fresh. The music is fresh because that other theme song is one of the worst in Impact history. I know she got on Twitter. She's like, you know, F you if you don't like my theme songs. The people, you know, I have a great theme song. Like, no, you don't. Like, that song was so bad. Uh, so it's nice to hear something kind of different. Uh, we had Deanna on commentary. I was, I enjoyed this. I like when they have wrestlers on commentary because it, it breaks it up. Um I liked it a lot more when Stryker and D'Lo were in there because I'm I'm like, dude, anything to, you know, to break up the monotony of these two scripted motherfuckers. Um, but now that the commentary is so much better, it's not that big of a deal. But it's nice every once in a while to get a get a wrestler in there. And Deanna does a good job. And they're you know they got this match coming up to heart for hard to kill. You know the three of them and and Killer Kelly. And I said this on Twitter. This is the freshest match they have announced in years as far as just i mean the girls that have just never really messed you know got they, i shouldn't say haven't gotten the ring with each other because they, they have but it, it just a four-way of these four girls it just feel i don't know how to explain it it just feels very very fresh i think especially adding killer kelly to it because we don't get to see her a lot that much but um, I'm really looking forward to that match. It's a number one contenders match. I initially, when I first thought that saw the graphic, I thought it was Deanna and Masha versus uh, Killer Kelly and Taylor Wilde. And I thought it was a number one contenders for the tag team. And I was like, okay. But then I saw it was the knockouts championship. So the cool thing about that match is that it doesn't give away. I mean, it's a majority of heels in that match. It doesn't give away who's going to win the match because it's two baby faces against each other. You know, so I don't think Taylor Wilde's going to win. Um, I, don't, I know Masha's not going to win. They're not going to. She's not going to wrestle Jordan Grace again. I can promise you. Uh, but, I, you know, when, when I get into my hard to kill predictions, I'll give you my thoughts on all that. But I, I really do think it's the fret, just freshest overall feeling match they've, they've done in a while. Um, but she, but uh, but I really did like the the Taylor Wilde gimmick i would have done more with the lighting you know just you know give it a de decay-esque type of type of feel a little bit um this match was pretty good i would have preferred to see taylor wilde or masha have a match with someone else and gain some, gain some momentum i mean i guess you could say taylor wilde wins the match couldn't believe it she it does have the momentum though wrong all four wrestlers should have momentum going into this thing not like uh you know one of the competitors just lost you know i, I just can't that's just not how i like to watch wrestling um but it's whatever uh i was i wrote this down in my notes here i you know i i think masha's like snowplow is kind of a shit finisher which you guys know my opinion on impact finishers i think 90 percent of them suck um, and I think Masha is someone who could benefit from a really good one. It doesn't even have to be in, like innovative, but just something different. Cause like the snow plow is, you know, it's mayhem for all. It's a grace driver. It's like, you know, these moves are all very similar, but I was thinking, I think she would do a, a pretty badass like reverse power slam. Like, uh, Jeff Cobb does. Uh, I think that would be different for, for females. Um, and I think it'd be kind of like dev devastating for her. I, I I don't know why that just kind of hit me during the match. I said, I think that would be an awesome uh, move for her. And uh, she needs a better name than the snowplow, by the way, because that's just some Al Snow's finisher's name. So um, I just think it's one of the worst finishers. Uh, the po So Taylor Wilde wins this thing. The, the, the only complaint about the match was that this was one of the worst, flattest finishes I've seen on this show. In forever i don't know if they did they messed something up because there was a distraction and then they go in, but they go in the ring and it's cold there's no you know it's it's not high pace no one's running at each other there's no one hitting from each other behind they just cold cold footed walked up to each other and 
Masha gets rolled up. And we are going through, we've we've been going through months and months of these squash matches with Masha. And, th- and then she just takes a small package finish for her third loss in a row. Uh, I guess fourth loss, because she's not going to win this match at Hard to Kill. I really doubt it. Because uh, they're just not going to do the same. Uh, again, when I preview Hard to Kill, I get into all that. Let me, let me not uh, do all that. I thought the post-match angle with Deanna, though, was needed. I thought um, that way we're kind of conditioned to forget that Masha just lost the match, you know? Um, when Masha took out the security guard before she did, cause she, she attacks the security guard. She went over to David Benzer and I was praying that she was about to take him out. Like the, like they took out D'Lo Brown several months ago and wrote him off TV. And I feel like, um, Penzer has been doing a little bit better. I feel like I, I hear him, trying to announce people differently now because uh i don't know if he heard what i said i don't know but my complaint was that he announces everyone the same from the jobbers to the champions everyone gets the same entrance the same energy They've all been much, much better than him, <laughs> you know, um, but they seem like they really want to stick with them. But I was I was like twisting my fingers that they were going to write him off TV. And I've said many times, like, I think he v- could be very good on commentary because he did commentary one episode. It was really good. I enjoyed it. I would I wish he could do that instead, like just do a three man booth. Fuck it. You know, anyway, um, she didn't take him out. She took out the security guard. And again, I thought it was needed, you know. All right, so I kind of spent a lot of time on that one. Let's move on. Sammy Callahan uh, did a little backstage deal. Um, still wants to join a design. I don't know why. Because he's not he's not acting like he's giving in. You know what I mean? It's it's more like I can offer something to you guys. Like It's almost like he's, he's offering to be the leader in a sense. But I don't want him to be a le- the leader because last time he led a stable, they were jobbers. So... Um, I don't, I don't know what they're doing with this, but I'm interested. I'm interested. They haven't announced anything for Hard to Kill with these guys, though. So we'll see. I have to imagine Sammy Callahan's going to be on the card. Rich Swan had a promo after this where he challenged Steve Macklin to a Falls Count Anywhere match. And this is like when I, at the top of the show, when I was talking about some of the storyline, uh, you know, storylines that kind of went over my head. Macklin has the DQ finish versus Kazarian and the count out finish versus. Uh, Swan, and because those were two different opponents, it didn't. I didn't tie them together. That uh, some kind of stipulation like this was going to come into play. So, um, bravo on that. So uh, these are two of my three favorite wrestlers in the company, Swan and and Macklin, uh, to go with along with Moose. Um, And I decided there was a fourth the other day. Who was it? Uh. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to look at the roster and see what it was. But, the, you know, those are the three guys I really like. So I'm really looking forward to the match. This was a really good Rich Swan promo. I thought that if he did more of these when he was the world champion, like with the conviction and the anger and just the seriousness, I think he would have got over a little bit better with the Impact audience because when he was a, the champion, I was always saying back then, okay, I like the Rich, Rich Swan gimmick, but now that you're the man, like you got to – you got to serious it up a, a bit. I know it's not a real phrase, but you, you got to, you can't have, be so fun loving going out there. I felt like he had to be a little more serious, but instead he was talking like this. So I thought we need, I think we need more of this from Rich Swan. So I'm, I'm like stupid looking forward to this match. This is one I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about. All right. So crazy Steve is in the match. After this, uh, he's, I mean, in the ring after this, he's cutting a promo. Decay has lost all mystery. If, uh, you know, for those of you who've been listening to me for a while, I used to talk about with the broken Hardy gimmick. They started cutting promos in the ring instead of doing stuff backstage strictly. They just became like everybody else. And I said, I used to say the same about the Shield when I watched WWE because I was a major Shield fan. Uh, not the like reunion shields that they do because I don't care about any of them anymore. But 
I mean, back in the day, you know, uh, 2013, 2014, I was a stupid, stupid big fan of the Shield. They used to cut the very those Sammy Callahan type like backstage promos, and then they started holding a microphone in the ring, and they just became like everybody else. So crazy Steve out there, he's got a microphone. Um, I thought this would have been better suited if he just they just played it on the jumbotron. Like a, a I I liked what he said and what he did, but they're getting a little cartoonish with the green and all that. So you, you got to keep some of the mystery about it still some of the spookiness so i just thought he shouldn't have been in the ring doing this but he's a good talker and i think that's going to benefit black taurus going forward i think they're we're going to see a lot more black taurus single matches and they've decided like the decay uh experiment was was a dud i think we were excited about it at first but they didn't beat anybody it was very all over the place. Havoc came in and and Rosemary is kind of a still being a comedy character a little bit. And it was like it just didn't work. It didn't hit like the first decay, which was one of the best things of the show back then. So I think they, they were like, you know what? Steve's a great talker. Uh, we can use that to his advantage a little bit more uh, and, and start getting Black Taurus into some actual angles. So I think we're going to see a little bit more singles with him than than decay as a tag team and then black taurus has his own music now so i don't know if they if that's the decay if that is the decay music or not i don't even know if they're decay anymore you know uh, tom called them decay but you know we don't know they might just be com- completely uh changing these so uh black taurus took on anthony green um i know anthony D- anthony green was in nxt and i think he did like an AEW dark match or two. This this was okay for me. I I don't know if I like the gimmick or him yet. I have no idea. But this was one of those um no build, no nothing. I'm not saying it needed a build, but I mean as far as like announce he just showed up at Impact. There was no like Anthony Greens coming and there was anticipation or nothing. Like they they do this sometimes. They just bring in a dude and we don't know if he's gonna stick around or not. I can't imagine he is. He just lost his first match, but it, it was decent. Um, Destination Hell holds a great finisher. Uh, Black Taurus has one of the best finishers. He has one of the best names for the finishers. And I think you're going to see he's going to continue to get over with the audience because of those things. Those are just like little things. Um, that's part of a wrestler's brand. And more than ever is what really gets them over because they have to do the social media and they have to uh do the meet and greets and the and the indie shows and and uh, wrestlers are their own bosses now more than ever um so i i do think the finisher is part of that package a finisher that people want to see they want to hear the name uh that's why i kind of clown the grace driver and some of these names because I think it's cool when someone has a great name for a finisher and the announcer yells it, you know, I, I just, I just think that that's cool. Again, it, it works towards their brand. So um, Trey Miguel shows up after and he, he takes out and takes out Anthony green and tags him. I can't imagine we're ever going to see Anthony green again after that. Maybe he's going to have a match versus Trey to try to, uh, you know, right his wrongs, but I, I doubt it. Next was one of my favorite parts of this show was Kenny King backstage with the students of Speedball, Mike Bailey. I love this entire thing. That power slam he gave him was everything. (laughs) I'm thinking he's just going to punch these dudes. You know, I mean, that guy comes at him and he just hits him with a a spinning power slam. Uh (laughs) he whooped their asses he just he's a great talker kenny king that's the other one where i was like i think i added a fourth person on my list it's kenny king but it kind of was brought to my attention that this match is not so i mean let me rewind a little bit speedball speedball mike bailey he's angry cuts the best promo he's ever cut in impact we believed it. It wasn't fake and phony. And then he challenged him to a pit fight. No rings. I mean, no rings, no ropes, no submission. So that sounds, that sounds really cool. My concern is that this isn't on the hard to kill card. 
my concern is that this is Kenny King's last match in the company. And that it would, you know, he's he's gonna put my I mean Mike Bailey's gonna win the match. They announced the match for him hard to kill. He's not gonna go into it as a loser, you know, that into that six way. So he's gonna win this match. I mean, how often does Mike Bailey lose? You know, Kenny King loses all the time. But Kenny's acting is great. Even the even the acting of the students was good. Like the kid that was talking to him, it wasn't fake. You know what I mean? Like it was just it was believable. Um I mean, a kid cuts a better promo than Mike Bailey does. But my concern is that this is his last match. And I really hope that's not the case because he's not in hard to kill. And it would make sense. It's the end of the year. It's the last set of tapings. He stuck around a little longer than the other guys. I don't know. Like, I want to see Kenny King around for the for the long term. I don't think there's anything for him in AEW right now. Uh, I mean, he's good enough to be there. But, you know, you know how it is over there. So. And on hard to kill has to be because the match is a stipulation match. There's a lot of stipulation stipulation matches on the show. There would be too much redundancy if he was if this match was on the card. I mean, the main event is Full Metal Mayhem, so you can't have like multiple hardcore style matches on the card. You know what I mean? Um, so that that is my concern though is that this this like writes him off TV for good. Uh, then we get a. Uh, Jobber entrance for Jonathan Gresham. I mean, there was no, he didn't get music, nothing. He's just already in the ring. The editing of the show has a lot to be desired because we have to bask in these entrances and we have to bask in the, the, uh, the finishes sometimes, you know, like they'll have this like finish and it'll be, you know, a post-match angle. And then they just abruptly cut to, you know, someone backstage with the, with the video game sound. So I, I I don't know. This was is weird that he was just already in the ring. He took on Ernest R. Anthony. This match was a little long for me. I I would have rather seen the entrance than this match. <laughs> to be honest, like it was just um, a long match versus a guy that doesn't look like a star. He he should have just won it a lot quicker. I don't know. Uh, unless I fast forwarded or something, there was nothing post match with Eddie with this maybe there was maybe i just didn't write it down but i would have thought there'd be something another backstage segment uh tasha and savannah talking with uh giselle and jay which i think are just a great pairing i think it's everything that caleb and and tenille could have been and more they just they're so good and natural together they fit together perfectly and i just love this i love that you know, Giselle had to justify teaming up with these girls, you know, to challenge Decay. And and um, I love that we we have something to do for Tasha and Savannah. And they're, te- you know, they're teasing a little dissension. I don't think they're going to break up. But I just love it. I love the dynamic. Uh, we heard Savannah speak, which we don't hear that too much. But I, I love the d- dynamic between the three of them. Uh, I would imagine they're going to win this match at Hard to Kill. I know, I know that those girls are the champs, but... If Giselle and Tasha and Savannah lose, I mean, that's three girls right there where it's like, what the hell do you do with them? I mean, you, you're going to take out three in one swoop. You know, what the hell's next for them? Uh, then we get uh, a lot of backstage segments here, but, that, that, you know, that's okay. We want to get as many people on the show. Uh, the design, they're going to shave Sammy's head next week. So Sammy has already had his head shaved before. He lost in uh, the hair versus mask match with Pentagon, which is one of the best matches. I don't know if they're trying to, you know, hey, if you want to be with us, this is the initiation and he's going to go along with it. I I don't really know, but I do like the whole you don't choose choose the design, the design chooses you. I think that's becoming kind of their slogan. Um and we'll see if it that that continues to play out as as the as the crew grows and if that's something that, you know, there's people who try to join them. You know, it it just be interesting, but it seems like a lot of people don't like this stuff. They don't like Cody Diener in this role, but 
I, I can dig it. I like it. Um, then we get a Josh package backstage. Uh, we got the the slow mo C four spike that I, I refer to. I, this I, I got to say this about Josh's title reign. This will never be broken. I, this is not a record. I think that Impact is going to break in our lifetime, <laughs> or in the lifetime of this company, I should say. I mean, how long did Bobby Roode have the record? And he hasn't been with the company for years. He doesn't, you know, acknowledge the company as like where he came from. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. You would have just thought they would have broken this a long time ago. I thought Moose would have been a better person, not better than Josh, but a, a better person at the time. A good person at the time, put it like that, to break that record. In the pop TV days, I remember saying, yo, Mike Bennett would be, I always thought, I thought he was going to be around for a while. I thought he'd be a great world champion. Uh, and I always said, I thought he was the guy that would, you know, could could break the record and would be entertaining. So it, it's weird to have a baby face break, break the record. But they're going to cement Josh's legacy because, you know, one thing I was talking about the other podcast I did, the uh, resolutions, was that when you have the people come in and they cut the TNA promos and they're they're talking about AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels and Samoa Joe and Sting and Kurt Angle, like these are all guys who left the company like a decade ago. I mean, we're we're uh, we're close to like a, at least a decade on all of them. Like Kurt Angle is probably the one who's probably like eight years eight years ago, nine. You know, but these are all guys who haven't been affiliated forever, and we ha- there's no one to fill in those gaps. You know, they didn't, they dropped the ball pretty hard with EC3 at one point. So, you you know, you, you can't throw him in there. You can't throw James Storm in there. You never put the damn belt on him with the, you know, with the exception of him having it for five minutes. So this is like this big, like eight, nine, 10 year gap of people who just aren't in the, the same breath as those people. And now they have someone who is so, you know, Josh is going to be pretty dominant for years to come. They're not going to break this record. Uh, when, oh, wow, this, this, <laughs> this next one, Moose in the ring, he's cutting this promo and, and I'm just thinking Moose is a million bucks. Everything he does is great. I'm enjoying this. Uh, I like Joe Hendry a lot. Uh, I don't really like the digital media championship, but I'm like looking forward to see what happens between these two guys. And I'm looking for it's in them wrestling head of. It's sometimes it's awkward when they like force the phrase "say my name" or "say his name" into their promos, and then he shows up. So Moose does it on purpose this time. And Joe Hendry, of course, comes out right away, and he says, "I wrote a song for you, and it's Dancing Moose, and it's a version of his theme song of Joe Hendry's theme song." The editing of the editing of this was so bad, so bush league, but that's what made it so funny and just. I miss that Joe Hendry of like doing the songs, but I guess because he's on TV, he can't really remix songs. So it's kind of hit or miss when he's doing totally original stuff. But this was freaking hilarious. I was I was dying. I, I'm pretty sure you were too. I think the majority of people just found this really entertaining and Moose is just getting pissed off. And then he, you know, says whatever he says. and It's like hit my music and they play the song again the crowd was digging this this was tremendous um i always talk about people who are genuinely funny and how that works it can work on a wrestling show it's when you force the humor that it doesn't work um and joe hedge is a funny dude mickey james they did this video package of her story her history this was great this was excellent it was very well done. It was a little weird that she was talking about being a part of the biggest story, one of the biggest storylines in WWE history. Like now we're breaking kayfabe here a little bit. It's that was kind of odd. I don't know if that was, I don't think it was done purposely. I think it was just overlooked by everybody, you know? Um, that's truly what I think, but it, it, it stood out to me like storyline, you know, but we definitely need more of this. She talked about needing uh, meeting Nick Aldis, and it even got me. It got me thinking more because a lot of people have brought up: Is Nick Aldis going to help her win? Are they going to turn heel? I got a lot of thoughts about Mickey James and my hard to kill preview, um, and why I am convinced she is winning. So I got I got a lot of a lot of thoughts on that. But this was great. 
it was a little long, but I didn't really care. Like I was into it. I was engaged. And I think we need, you know, a little bit more of this um, instead of, you know, her and uh, Jordan talking again or doing some kind of sit down interview or something like that. Like this, this was just really, really good. Um, I, I wrote down in my notes here that the knockouts can really re relaunch into that next level. If they, they just, they got to get that next Mickey or next Gale because that's, those are the ones we know where they did a WWE thing. They did it like twice and they came back home and this was their home and they're dedicated to the company and you, you never feel Well, they're just they need that modern day girl um to to do that like if it was mercedes monet you know it's not gonna be um but if they were able to land at like next gail or mickey it would take the the knockouts division to the next level um they did a don west video which is great um i didn't do a little don west tribute graphic before this podcast because i did before my last one before the resolutions, but this was, um, this was really good. I, I kind of laughed though, I guess not to be inappropriate, but I laughed because Sammy Callahan did his little video portion and he's wearing the same exact outfit from when he cut his promo on the design earlier. So, uh, they clearly, he clearly did that, you know, one after another, but very nice Don West package. They now acknowledge Don West on AEW. They acknowledge, acknowledge him on uh, Monday night raw, I believe. So it was awesome. And he, you know, he did the impossible and moved merch for impact. <laughs> I say the impossible because they just with the when he wasn't involved, they've never had a engaging strategy to move merch. You know, it's just like, hey, if we just post this mock up image, people will buy it. That's all it's ever been, you know. So um I enjoyed what he did and um all the good moments in TNA. So rest in peace. Then we got the main event, Chris Sabin versus Matt Cardona. I don't have anything special to write about this. I knew Chris Sabin was going to win. Um, I, I've said it. I think Cardona, this will be his last match. Chelsea Green just signed with WWE. Like He's on his way over there, or at least wants to be. So as much as I like the, the uh, I was going to call them the primetime players, the major players, I think it's going to be his last match. So I, I just didn't expect him to win this. When you watch a wrestling show and you get a main event like this, you know that there's something after it. They're not going to go off the air with Chris Saban and, and, and Matt Cardona. And sure enough, there was. And I, at first, I'm going to admit, I was like, oh, God, here we go. And the reason I say that is because I'm a big fan of letting things breathe. And we're going through this episode. I'm like, oh, my, we don't have Bully Ray and Josh there and shit. Like, cool. Like that. It's awesome because we need to build some of this other stuff up. And then at the go-home show, we can get real heavy with those guys. But then the match is over. And here comes Scott Dean Moore. And here comes Bully Ray. And at first, I was like, here we go. Which, my mind on that changed very quickly. I understand Scott is necessary for this angle. But, I mean, he was talking forever. And I was just like, man, I would do anything for him to have less screen time. But just uh, Bully. That sounds exactly like him, by the way. It it, ran, it went a little long, but I was engaged. I was engaged in it. Um, they were kind of saying some of the same shit. Say, but you know, taking it to the next level. Then it gets violent at the end. They look like they want to fight. They look like they're going to fight. And I'm like, please fight. And Scott slaps him. And I'm like, here we effing go. They need to lay out Scott just like they were going to. They should have laid out Penzer in the opening match. <laughs> but I guess you can't do it twice. So the one thing that, that ah, God, if I got, if I got to just like nitpick about this is that when he got slapped, I would have, if I were, you know, Bully Ray, I would have turned right around and just right there beat the shit out of him in about five, six minutes. Um, I would, it, you know, it would have been shocking if he like Irish whipped him to the ropes and hit him with a clothesline, you know, <laughs> just stuff like that. Uh, when you do actual like moves like that. Um, 
I thought it and then hit him with a pile driver. I thought it would have been a little more effective if it was quick. But we have Hotch and Skyler come down who are kind of established himself as, as, as the lackeys of Bully Ray. And they're holding Scott and it's taken forever. Um, but then Bully Ray hits him or kicks him in the stomach. I forgot what it was. And then he executes the pile driver. I was like, this is excellent. Laid out Scott Demore. Hopefully they write him off TV. He'll probably be back on the next episode. Saying, Josh, Josh sounds exactly like him. Um, but this, you know, Bully Ray is a great heel. I, I just, I really, I keep saying this, but I take back everything I said about when he won the gauntlet. Um, he's really just proved me wrong as a wrestling fan. He's, he's done a really good job with this. We let, la- we lack these kind of heels in wrestling, you know, like he's doing nothing that's going to get him a pop. And if there is a little bit of a pop, he puts an end to it. You know, that's, that's veteran shit. Um, I don't know who's going to win this match, though. I really don't. If I if they weren't already foreshadowing like Steve Macklin would have a title shot, I would be confident Bully Ray was winning this thing, especially with him having a little stable now. So I don't know. The, the if, if Bully Ray loses, they an, immediately have to find something for him to do. And I mean, it has to happen on that episode or the first segment of the next impact. You know what I mean? But... um. So what I would have changed about this too, because this was what, you know, me nitpicking, they're holding Scott and they're holding him forever and no referees are running down and no security. The, the, the ring announcer, not the ring announcer, the bell timekeeper is not ringing the bell. There's nothing done to stop their boss from being taken out. Everyone is just watching and enjoying it. No one comes from backstage Sorry, my internet kind of keeps cutting in and out. Um, so the baby faces, they like him, right? No one came down to save him. So that's why, you know, I would have just had Bully Ray like take him out very, very quickly. And I got to give props to Scott for he takes a pile driver and then he's holding his head in pain, rolling around. One of my pet peeves as a wrestling fan, I don't know why they do this. You know, someone will do a move and Everything knocks everyone out cold, I guess is what I'm going with it. AEW had a segment two weeks ago. They laid Keith Lee on a table, put a cinder block on him. Swerve Strickland jumps off the top rope, double stomps the cinder block. It breaks on him. He's not laying on the ground, coughing and clutching his chest. He's out cold. And that doesn't make any sense. Um, I don't think many room moves should knock people out cold. I think you should appear that you're hurt and in pain and scott kind of did this so uh major props to to scott but they've done a very good job with this angle this main event for hard to kill and i just think we got a great pay-per-view coming up i can't wait to review it for you guys and give you my thoughts um, on who's gonna win and who's gonna lose so that is it for me right now folks uh i'm your boy bq i will talk to you next time peace